Hello world, Geriatric Geek here. How in the heck are you? I hope you're doing great. It's another beautiful morning here in North Las Vegas, Friday, February the 5th, 2021. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching my little videos. I do appreciate it. And because of that, yeah, that's right. I'm going to show you some stuff that uh, I picked up from Hamilton Book today. Something I got on sale for a heck of a good price. Also, not from Hamilton Book. And there's going to be a giveaway at the end of this video. I'll tell you all about it. So stick around for a few minutes. Um, not going to be tremendously long. Hamilton Book, like I said, uh, is most of the, well, all of these, but one are from. So um, every once in a while, I get this urge, I don't know what it is, but to go on Hamilton Book and and hit the the search horror movies for the least expensive stuff they have just to see what they have and see if there's anything that you know B movie grade kind of things that I don't have in my collection and that's cheap and then I realize after I do that when I get them home that you know what more than likely all of this stuff will eventually show up at Dollar Tree why do I do it? Why do I do that to myself? I say, but here we are. <laughs> I did it again. So I'm going to share with you what I picked up from Hamilton book that will probably, no, not probably, probably, these will definitely, I'm sure, let me know what you guys think, but I'm pretty sure all of these things will eventually be in Dollar Tree if they haven't already. And uh, one or two of them I thought I may have already seen there, so, and just couldn't find. But anyway, enough of this blabber. Let's get on with this thing that you see what I picked up. And I hope you guys are doing good. Hope you're staying safe uh, wherever you are. I know back east it's going to be colder than heck, uh, if not today, in the near future. So you guys try and stay warm and hope the cars don't freeze up too bad, so... Anyway, uh, here we go. First up, we have a movie I thought I may have seen over there. It has Anne Hathaway in it, Jason Sudeikis, Dan Stevens, and Tim Blake Nelson. Why wouldn't I pick it up when it says Colossal? That's right. 2016 sci-fi comedy kind of thing. It's pretty good reviews. Anne Hathaway, I understand, does a great job in this movie. Um, it's from, like I said, 2016. Uh, that's about all I know. Uh, this is evidently is Canadian film, or yeah. So Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis rekindle an old friendship while a giant monster terrorizes Soul in this sci-fi comedy. Special feature. The U.S. cut of the film. All right. Very interesting. Colossus. Let me know down below if you guys have seen any of these and whether they're straight up trash or whether you think they're worth a watch. Let's find a place to put these. All right. Next up, and this probably is not very good at all, but hey, it has slashers in the name, so I wanted it. And I haven't seen it at Dollar Tree yet. Wedding Slashers, R-rated, 80 minutes long, 2006. It's kind of a horror comedy. And this kind of gets mediocre reviews from what I've found. Uh, Jenna dreams of finding the perfect man and getting married. Like every girl, she grows up dreaming of walking down the aisle on that special day. But a series of unfortunate accidents take the lives of every boy she's ever loved. Then she falls for Alex, and the wedding date is set. When the best man is murdered at the bachelor party and girls in the bridal party start to disappear, Jenna has the terrifying realization that those were no accidents. The terrible secrets from her past have come back to torment her. Hmm. Yeah. Let me know if you guys have seen this one. What do you think? Let's go back. Sounds interesting. Now this one, I think I have seen at Dollar Tree before, but I've never been able to find it. 
something called the rake. Let me know down below if you guys have seen anybody find this at Dollar Tree. It's not rated. 78 minutes from 2018. I believe it's a creature feature. And it doesn't get very good reviews, but because uh, look at that thing on the back. If that's not a creature, I don't know what is. The rake. At a young age, Ashley and Ben witnessed the brutal murder of their parents. Years later, Ashley is still convinced it wasn't someone, but something that killed her parents. And now she's tormented by the thought of the rake returning for her and her family. Is Ashley traumatized, or is this, or is the creature inside her real? The creature inside of her. Hmm. All right. Sounds, sounds interesting, but probably not. We'll see. I'll bet 75% of these don't make my shelf, but I'm going to watch them just to get a kick and a giggle. Next. I'm not a country music fan at all, but I love the Hee Haw show back when it was on. It's from like 1969. I was still in high school then. So, picking and grinning, singing and spinning, tell ta tall tales and corny jokes, the citizens of Cornfield County landed on television in 1969 with the arrival of Hee Haw as a summer replacement series for the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. My parents used to love watching that stuff. Each week, co-hosts Buck Owens and Roy Clark and the cast of comedians and musician, musicians would welcome the biggest stars in country music to perform their songs and help deliver the one-liners. Includes performances by Merle Haggard, Conway Twitty, Buck Owens, Loretta Lynn, Tammy Wynette, plus bonus interviews with Roy Clark, George Lindsay, and Lulu Roman. Yeah, thought I'd check this out one, at least one time then send it back to my dad. I think he'd probably get a kick out of that. Yes, the geriatric geek's dad is still alive. 93 years old. This I didn't have in my collection, and it has my man on it, Danny Trejo. That's right. The Killing Jar. 90 minutes long, R-rated, 2010, a thriller mystery. You know, it gets pretty good reviews for the acting. Uh, Michael Madsen evidently is pretty darn good, and I'm sure Danny is great. Working the late shift at a remote diner turns into an unrelenting nightmare for waitress Noreen when she and six customers learn of a nearby murder spree that's connected to a mysterious stranger who just walked in the door. A hostage situation quickly erupts, resulting in shocking outbursts of violence and even more startling revelations they could never anticipated. Packed with twists and high-voltage performances, this white-knuckle thriller also featuring Danny Trejo Machete, and Harold Perrineau will keep you guessing all the way to the shocking end. Brought by Image Entertainment. Looks like a rockin' and rollin' good time to me. Noreen. Noreen. Oh, that's the name of... Uh, <laughs> I used to know a, a girl in college, and I could not think of her name for the longest, and that just helped me remember, so... Cool. Psycho Sideshow... Psycho Sideshow Demon Freaks Bunker of Blood Chapter 5. I knew nothing about that, but I, it was cheap and looked interesting. 60 minutes long, 2018. It takes place in a, an amusement park, so I'm always down for anything in an amusement park. Uh, yeah. It doesn't get very good reviews, I understand. Full Moon's Bunker of Blood opens its rusty doors once more for this fifth and freakiest installment in the series. When we say freakiest, we mean it. I want to look around for the other four, you know? See if I can find them cheap. takes you deep into a three-ring circus of shock, blasting out a caustic cauldron of clips from such classic full moon favorites as Lurking Fear, Dark Angel, Seed People, Shrieker, and of course, Castle Freak, 
and frames them with an all-new animated narrative. This time, the gore collector winds his way into a terrifying amusement park from hell known as Carnage Kingdom. <laughs> Let me know down below if you guys have ever heard of this. Let me know what you thought. Probably not very good. This one I'm almost positive I've seen some people get in uh, in Dollar Tree, but I may be wrong. Triggered, not rated, 114 minutes from 2019. Probably a comedy horror kind of thing. Gets uh, mediocre reviews. This snowflake is deadly. <laughs> An overbearing social justice warrior and her friend fake an attack by a legendary serial killer for a little attention. But the plan backfires when this triggers the real killer to resurface and go after them and begin stalking students on their college campus. All right. There you go. Triggered. I don't know. This one... Next month, this is going to be in Dollar Tree. It has to be. <laughs> All things that go to Dollar Tree hit Hamilton book first, I do believe. That's right. Ghoul. Not rated. 89 minutes from 2015. It's a supernatural horror. And it's basically from a real-life story of Russia's most violent serial killer. It's so-so reviews, from what I understand. It's put out by E1. Three Americans travel to the Ukraine to film a documentary about the cannibalism epidemic that swept through the country during the famine of 1932. After being lured deep into the Ukraine forest for an interview with one of the last known survivors, they quickly find themselves trapped in a supernatural hunting ground. Pretty good to me. We shall see. Next up, Hell's Caretaker. Caretaker. First he took care of the house, then he took care of the people. Look at that. This is definitely going to Dollar Tree. <laughs> it's put out by Brain Damage Films. Wow. Written and directed by Philip Capello, Hell's Caretaker is a straightforward horror movie about six friends one dog and one very bad man. Sam has recently inherited his parents' old farmhouse in Vermont. Sam's faithful dog is sick and must be put down. At his 10-year high school reunion, Sam meets up with a gang of friends. They decide to take his dog to the farmhouse for one last party weekend, but have no idea the horror that awaits them. Okay. I say this was, uh, I don't remember what I told you guys, this is not rated, 2013, 75 minutes. Brain damage films. All right. Next up, Secrets Can Be Dangerous. This kind of looks creepy. Safe Space, not rated, 2017, 120 minutes. I knew nothing about this one, but it was very inexpensive. Has an edgy appeal that draws you in an unsuspecting moth to an in like an unsuspecting moth to an alluring light, and then zaps a fatal shock right into the nervous system. All right. An elite fraternity president of Williamsburg University becomes obsessed with a young co ed, but his hopeful courtship decays into sinister pursuit while dark secrets surface about the brotherhood he leads on campus and even more horrific truths about his personal history. This is put out by, oh, Wild Eye, is that Wild Eye, I think? Hmm. Sounds interesting. Let me know if you've seen this one. Don't, I could not find any reviews on it, so I don't know. All right, how about a little witch, a little witchy action? 
Suburban Coven. It's terrible reviews. Not rated. 2018, 110 minutes, and it's a thriller. This is also a, a Wild Eye, I think. Wild Eye. I just can't read that. Wild Eye releasing, yes. After a traumatic accident, newlyweds seeking help for their sexual dysfunction are pulled into a web of danger with their neighbors, who may be part of a coven of practicing witches, and this discovery may cost them their lives. Bonus features, trailers. <sighs> these these low-budget things make me laugh. I get a big kick out of them. I do. <sighs> My wife says, why do you watch that stuff? I say, hey, I need a laugh. I need a laugh every once in a while. This is put out by Magnet called Satanic. R-rated, 84 minutes from 2016. The reviews I've seen weren't very, very positive. A van full of young college students visit old Satanic Panic era sites in Los Angeles. They end up following the creepy owner of an occult store home, only to find themselves saving a suspicious girl from an apparent human sacrifice. Only this victim turns out to be much more dangerous than the cult from which she escaped. Hmm. Sounds interesting, but we shall see. The acting probably is not great. We'll see. We shall see. More witches! Featuring the infamous King of the Witches, Alexander Sanders. Legend of the Witches. 1969, 72 minutes. Black and white. It's a documentary. It gets pretty good reviews. I do tend to like these documentaries about witches and, and horror and all that. Let's see. Directed by Malcolm Lee. Distributed by VCI Entertainment. The Historical Origins of Witchcraft in Moon Worship and the Witch's Legend of Creation, Initiation Rites Underground by the Modern Witch, Divination by Birds and Animals, Christianity's Absorption of Pagan Rites, Revenge Killing, the Black Mass, and they got it all, Investigations into the Efficacy of Witchcraft, Extra Century Perception, and Foretelling the Future. All featuring the infamous King of the Witches in the only footage in the existence of the King of the Witches, Alexander Sanders, who uses this documentary to guide us through his coven. Oh. I'm going to check, that relative, check this out relatively soon. If you've seen or heard of this one, let me know. Next up, one of the few Blu-rays I picked up, but this one is a good one. Well, it's black and white, but it's probably good. The, full, <laughs> the Four Skulls of Jonathan Drake. Black and white from 1959, 70 minutes long. It gets really good reviews, is what I was trying to say. He was the custodian of the icebox that kept the skulls crisp and fresh. The sins of the fathers rest heavily on the heads of the sons, literally, in this fun-filled fright fest that That'll keep you awake and screaming through many a traumatic night, forced with an age-old forced faced. Read. Eek, come on. Faced with an age-old family curse that beheaded their forefathers, two brothers attempt to unravel the family plot, even as sinister forces attempt to put them into it. It's a Scream Factory, <coughs> Scream Factory release. Nice. All right. Here's the back. I think it's got some Native American things going on in here. Appears to. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Next up. I don't know that what this is, but I it was cheap, so I got it. Aardvark, 89 minutes, 2017. I think it's just a drama or a story of mental illness how it affects fo folks around the mentally uh, mental ill folks. Uh, it gets pretty good reviews. I mean, mediocre reviews, I should say. Aardvark follows Josh Norman, a troubled man who has lived in the shadow of his brother Craig 
For so long, he starts seeing that shadow everywhere. After experiencing a series of hallucinations involving Craig, an actor and the star of a popular TV drama, Josh, Josh places himself in the care of Emily, a young therapist. Emily wades deeper and deeper into Josh's psychologically troubled world and suddenly finds herself falling for the famous brother. Caught between the family dysfunction and her alluring neediness, is Emily willing to risk her career and reputation all for the sake of love? Hmm. Sounded interesting to me. I don't. Let me show you the back real quick. Put this one out. Universal. Universal. Put that one out. Next up, I thought I had this one, but evidently I didn't. I certainly didn't have it in Blu-ray, so. The Bad Seed, not rated, 1956, black and white, 89 minutes. It's about an evil young girl, basically. Rhoda is a well-mannered eight-year-old little lady and an efficient, unfeeling killer. <laughs> yeah, and in this spellbinding chronicle of evil, whatever Rhonda, Rhoda wants, she ruthlessly gets. Sounds interesting to me. Put out by Warner Brothers. Gets really good reviews, so why not some bad seed? Let me know if you guys have seen that. All right, so the last thing from Hamilton Book is another Blu-ray. And this was an upgrade for me. I had this on DVD, so I wanted to check it out on Blu-ray, and it was very inexpensive. The whole. PG-13, 92 minutes from 2009. This movie reminds me of The Gate, kind of. It gets really, it's, you know, it gets really good reviews. And I do remember, I, I think I remember seeing it some time ago, probably back in 2009. This is from director Joe Dante, who did Gremlins and Inner Space, The Burbs, and Small Soldiers. It's a scary new tale that will give you goosebumps. When Dane and his little brother Lucas move from the city to the suburbs, they're in for a big surprise, along with cute next-door neighbor Julie. So that hole in the basement, that's what it's about. There you go. So you, I teased that I wanted to show something that I got for very inexpensive. And currently, I believe on Amazon, is selling for at least $49, maybe more. I didn't look right before. I was going to look before I came on to the video, but I forgot to. But anyway, I got seriously lucky, and it flashed up on deep discount for $19.99. That's right. It's the 20, the Ultimate Collection, Blu-ray, Hammer Films, 20 film set. That's right, $19.99. It didn't last very long, maybe an hour and then it was gone. So I'm happy to have this bugger. I've seen a lot of the movies, but not all of them, but I'm just happy to have it on Blu-ray now. Uh, the Revenge of Frankenstein, The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, These Are the Damned, The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, uh, The Old Dark House, The Gorgon, Cash on Demand, The Snorkel, Maniac, Die, Die, My Darling, Stop Me Before I Kill, Never Take Candy from a Stranger, Scream of Fear, The Strangers of Bombay, The Terror of the Tongs, The Pirates of Blood River, Sword of Shore, Sher Sherwood Forest, La, The Camp on Blood Island, Yesterday's Enemy, and Creatures the World Forgot. New bonus features include uh, featurettes and retrospectives, full-length audio commentaries on select films, plus... 12-page movie and feature guidebook. So if you guys are into Hammer uh, films, this is the way to go. I don't know if it'll ever be down to $19. I think I'm pretty sure that was a mistake or an error that I just happened to get lucky and had it sent to me. So that's what I just opened it up. That's what it looks like inside. Different artwork. I like it. We dare you to watch. 
open them up. They're all on individual K. Oh, that's cool. Very nice. Very nice. Like a booklet. Oh, some more. There's the bonus features listed on the back. If you're interested in that. It's a course put out by Mill Creek, I do believe. Yes. And then on the inside, it gives like the back, what would be on the back of each of the films. Yeah, all the rest, all of them. And last page. Sort of Sherwood, Sherwood Forest. Kind of, I kind of want to watch that. I don't know why. Just the, these names kind of get me. So there you go. Yeah, I picked up. I got lucky. And got this for $19.99. Deep discount. So score for the geriatric geek. All right, let's give something away, you guys. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. You have to be a subscriber to win this. Um, let me see what I'm going to do here. Yeah. All right. So... Um, like I said, you have to be a subscriber. Uh, we're going to do it in the comments. You have to make a comment uh, using the the secret word, and uh, I'll do that uh, that contest probably. Let's see, today's like I said, Friday. Let's let's make it a week. Next Friday, I'll uh, announce the winner, pick the winner, and then announce it. And uh, good luck to everybody. Thank you so much for subscribing. I do appreciate it. If you like my videos, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Like I said, you got to be a subscriber to win this. So let's see if we got any fans of Supergirl out there. Supergirl, the complete third season. I'm gonna, it's not factory sealed. I do believe all I did was take the digital code out of this. No, digital code's even still in there. So. I had a double for some reason. Hopefully the digital code still works. I think it does. So we're going to do Supergirl. And this is really cool, I think. Complete Series 4 of Ultraman. Return of Ultraman. Brand new, factory sealed. Never been opened. And it's got the digital code, of course. This is from Mill Creek. So really cool. Any of you guys that are into uh, giant monsters, um, this is the fourth entry in the Ultraman series premiering in Japan in April of 71. It introduces dozens of new aliens and monsters, and it also features guest appearances from the original Ultraman and Ultra 7, presenting the first of many Ultra Hero team-ups. So, all 51 episodes of Return of Ultraman, I'm going to give it away to some lucky subscriber. So in the comments down below, use the word Ultraman, U-L-T-R-A-M-A-N, Ultraman, in your comment, and you'll be eligible in the running when these two. There you go. Good luck. And thanks for watching. Like I said, have a great day. Keep safe out there, you guys. Um, I hope everything's working for you. I hope, hope you're at work. Hope you're able to work. If you're, not, if you're retired like the old fart here, hope you're staying safe. Until next time, keep smiling. Always choose the positive alternative. Peace.